Welcome to my dear. Looks like paw prints. I need a bucket. The boat's full of water. The spark plug is missing. A face only a gnome could love. Oh, the key broke off. There's got to be another way to get this open. Hello? Nancy, hi, it's Sally. We have to talk fast because I'm in my car and my cell phone's running low, so we might get cut off. But did you see my note? Yes, are you all right? No, I feel awful bailing on you like that. You must think I'm such a flake. I'm just worried about you. What's wrong? I couldn't stand the thought of spending another night there. I knew you were on your way, but it didn't help. I just got too scared. What's to be scared of? It's so peaceful and quiet here. Just wait until it gets dark, then you'll see. What am I saying? Nancy, you shouldn't be there by yourself either. Why don't you just go get in your car and go home? Or drive to Philadelphia. My aunt's got plenty of room. One of your trees seems to have other plans for me. What do you mean? A tree fell down behind my car just as I was driving up to the house. I'm blocked in. Oh, the dead maple beside the driveway. Oh, they told me it was in danger of falling over when I had the place inspected. I just never got around to doing anything about it. Listen. Call M's Emporium. That's a store on the lake. Emily knows everybody. She'll know who to call if she decides to answer her phone. Don't worry about it. I'm not in any hurry to leave. You will be. Okay, look. I just bought a little outboard motorboat. I haven't used it yet, but the guy who put it in for me said it should run just fine. It's tied up at the dock out front. Just get in it and go. Go anywhere. Just get away from the house. Why? What on earth do you think is going to happen? The dogs! Dog out of nowhere. They're outside howling and snarling. Teeth and claws. Horrible. Dogs? Hello? Did you say dogs? Hello? What is that? The moon's so bright, I won't need my flashlight. Something's out there. Now look what you've done. That was a Strix Varia. At least I think it was. Never know for sure now, will I? Who are you? My name's Red Knot. And if you've got a volume knob, I'd appreciate your taking it down a notch before you scare away everything from here to Lancaster. Just what is it you're afraid I'll scare away? Birds. I'm trying to look for birds. What are you doing out here? My name's Nancy Drew. Didn't you hear all those strange noises? That was me, Miss Nancy Drew, calling in birds. And doing a pretty good job of it, too, till you showed up. Where'd you come from, anyway? I'm staying here in the old Malone place. Now, why would you want to do a thing like that? The Malone house is no place for one young woman, let alone two. You've met Sally? I talked to her a couple of times. But you know, the last time I saw her, she wasn't doing so good. She acted real anxious. Scared. Did she say what was wrong? The dogs. The dogs of Mickey Malone. Legend goes that when Malone was finally arrested and hauled away, his four dogs went running off into the woods and were never seen again. People would just hear them, howling like their hearts were broken every night until one by one, they all died and went silent. But every time someone tries living in the Malone house, Back they come. What do the dogs do? Every night, ever since she moved in, you could hear them howling. And some nights, the dogs would appear outside the house, running around, snarling and barking and throwing themselves at the doors and windows. And then, they'd be gone. 
They're buried in the cemetery just beyond the house, you know. Them and Malone both. The dogs would attack her house? It's like they don't want anybody but Malone living there. I guess they don't know he's dead. And so are they. Did she ever call the police? This isn't New York City, Miss Nancy Drew. All they got around here is one officious little park ranger. And all Jeff Akers does is sit around all day trying to figure out how he can get himself transferred out of here to a bigger park. Do you live close by? I just come to Moon Lake in the spring to look for birds. Got an observation platform just up the path, kind of my base camp, and I've got a little outboard down there on the lake. Left my car at the big dock up lake. Don't really need it. Are those the ghost dogs? Yes, ma'am. Which is why I think it would be a good idea if I went my merry way and you got yourself back inside that house. One more thing. The water in Sally's well needs to be tested. How do I do that? Get a sampling kit from Jeff Akers. Ranger station's on the east side of the lake. Good luck, Miss Nancy Drew. This is not good. Miss Nancy Drew. Please, just call me Nancy. I will if you keep your voice down. I just heard a cerulean warbler. Did you say last night that you have an outboard motorboat? Sure do. Only type of motorized vehicle that's allowed on Moon Lake. Heck, if it were up to me, I'd ban them too. Have everybody get around by canoe. Nothing like the threat of physical activity to keep tourists away. You're not exactly a people person, are you? I came to see birds, not people. The more people there are in a forest, the fewer birds there are. It's a fact of life. Reason I like to come here is because nobody else does. It's perfect. Not a decent grocery store, restaurant, or motel for miles. You don't happen to have any spare spark plugs lying around, do you? What's a pretty young lady like you know about spark plugs? I'm a very curious person, Mr. Knott. I like to know things. I might be able to help you out. After all, I was a Boy Scout. Be prepared. <laughs> but I don't want to leave you unprepared. Well, just so happens I've got two spark plugs right here in my pocket. Question is, if I give you one, what do I get for it? I don't need cash, but maybe you could take a few pictures for me. Know how to use a digital camera? Sure. What would you like me to take pictures of? Birds, of course. There's a couple of birds I'm supposed to take pictures of for Pepsob. That's People for the Preservation and Study of Birds. You can recognize them by their songs, which are on this tape, which you can play on my cassette player, which you're going to have to get from M's Emporium as soon as you get your boat fixed. <laughs> Think you can handle that? Sounds good. Here's everything you'll need. M's Emporium is up lake on the west side. Not that I'm trying to get you out of my hair or anything, but try not to come pestering me till you're done, okay? One more thing. You smoke? Cigarettes? No. These woods may not look it, but they're tinder dry. One lit match, and the best bird habitat on the East Coast will go up in smoke. So watch what you do, because if anything like that happens, I won't be looking for birds anymore. I'll be looking for you. Watch yourself out there. I'd better wait until daylight. I'd better be careful. Uh, missed it. I must 
must have scared it. You find all the birds? I found some birds, but no matter how quiet I am, I've been scaring other birds away before I can take their picture. What am I doing wrong? You're wearing those clothes. That's what you're doing wrong. You need to blend in, like me. Go back over to M's tacky tourist trap and get yourself some camouflage gear. Only sensible thing that money grubber carries. See you in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some sandpaper. Hey there! Welcome to M's Emporium. I'm Emily Griffin. I'm Nancy Drew. Sally McDonald said you might be able to help me. I like helping people. Of course, I like selling them stuff even better. But keep talking. I'm in town visiting her, you know, out at the old Malone place. Now what's she doing inviting guests out to that old dump? She's got a little problem she's hoping I can solve. But right now, I need a chainsaw. A chainsaw? What I really need is for someone to come out and remove the tree that fell in Sally's driveway. I'll get Tucker Davis to take care of it. Gotta warn you, though. Tucker tends to do things in his own sweet time. So how come Sally ain't with you? She thinks the Malone place is haunted, and after last night, I can see why. I told her. I said, Sally, that old house is gonna be nothing but trouble. And sure enough, Malone's hounds have come back, just when we all thought they were finally resting in peace. Have you ever seen the dogs? Nope. Don't want to, neither. Just hearing them howl's bad enough. Scares the bejeebies out of me. I got the bejeebies scared out of me twice last night. Just before I saw the dogs, I caught a man named Red Knot prowling around outside the house. The bird watcher. Comes in every so often to stock up on that weirdo food he eats. 
You know how them tree hugger types are. Has he been in the area long? About as long as those pink-billed warblers and purple-eyed owls he's always chasing have been around. Couple of months, I guess. I need to buy something. You want it? I got it. As long as you pay cash, that is. Right now, cash is kind of a problem for me. Do you think we could do some kind of trade-out? You scratch my back, I scratch yours, huh? Seeing as how you're a friend of Sally's, and seeing as how I got some things around here that could use doing, I guess we could work something out. What is it you need? Do you sell sandpaper by any chance? I do, but Mr. Birdbrain was in last week and cleaned me out. Said he was tired of that observation platform of his giving him splinters in his hinter regions. Think I could get some from him? He's your only hope. But you better ask him for it quick. That deck of his is pretty big, and those squares I sold him are pretty small. To make a long story short, I need some camouflage gear. Got some right over here. One size fits all. But I'm running kind of low on bait. So if you go out and get me, oh, say, a dozen little critters, I'll give you the camos. A dozen little critters? Worms, spiders, beetles, grubs. Anything that wriggles on its belly will do. Just look under stuff. Rocks, logs, dead leaves. Should be able to find 12 in no time. Do I need some kind of permit? Things ain't quite that bad around here. At least not yet. Now, if Jeff Aker's daddy was still around, you might get arrested for cruelty to animals or some such nonsense. Joe Akers used to be the deputy sheriff. Real critter lover, that one was. Guess I'll see you later. Always a pleasure.
How's the bird watching coming along? I'm sorry to keep bugging you, but I need some sandpaper. Emily said you might have some. Here, take it and scram. I was just about to call in a meadowlark. That was always Ruth's favorite. Was Good Ruth your heavens, wife? no. My wife had no patience for birding. Ruth was my dog. Border Collie. She'd hear a meadowlark, and by golly, her ears would perk, and she'd cock her head, and she'd just come as close to smiling as ever a dog could. Was she the only dog you ever had? Yep. Wouldn't be worth the hassle anymore. Especially now that I'm retired and spend so much time at Moon Lake. The place is surrounded by park land, and Ranger Acres just loves enforcing the leash laws. There it is again. Take your sandpaper and go... sand something, okay? It's stuck! Rotten floorboards, watch your- <coughs> It's still not fixed. Here, birdie, birdie, birdie! They need to be fastened to the floor. Hmm, it could be mice making that sound. It looks like a tiny hole. What's the combination? I bet those were deer mice. Better be careful. William Akers? I wonder if he's related to Jeff Akers. Joe Akers? Emily said Jeff Akers' father was named Joe. Maybe Jeff is related to William Akers after all. The dogs will lead the way. I wonder what that means. Hello, can I help you? Are you Jeff Akers? At your service. I noticed that you arrived by boat. Does that mean you're staying on the lake? I'm Nancy Drew. Sally McDonald is a friend of mine. I'm staying at her house. Let's see, Sally McDonald is the woman who bought the old Malone place. That's right, only she's gone back to Philadelphia. Malone's dogs got to her. Don't tell me she believes all that ghost dog stuff. I saw them myself. Whatever's out there, I'm sure they're no more and no less than exactly what they look and sound like. Dogs. Living, breathing, very noisy, dogs. Any idea what would make a dog's eyes glow yellow? 
something in their diet, maybe? Some oddball vitamin or protein. Why do you think dogs would attack Sally's house? Dogs can be trained to do almost anything. Have you ever investigated the ghost dogs yourself? Do you always ask this many questions? As a matter of fact, I do. I'm a very busy man, Ms. Drew, but... <sighs> I am here to serve the public. I found this old picture in Sally's house. Do you know who these people are? The man is Mickey Malone, I know that. I'm guessing that this is his girlfriend, uh, Vivian Burnett, I think her name was. And judging by the year of that brand new Ford in the background, I'd say the picture was taken in 1928. She was probably as familiar with Malone's house and his dogs as he was. Think there's any chance she's still alive? Tell you what, Miss Drew. Why don't I go through my files and see what I can dig up on this mystery woman? I'm a busy man, but like I always say, I'm here to serve. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. Oh, and one last thing. The deer mouse population has boomed this year, so please take precautions if you're cleaning out any area where they may have nested. They can carry some nasty diseases. Thanks for the tip, Ranger Acres. Hey, Nancy, how's the bait finding coming along? Got him right here. Well, now, you done all right for a city gal. Here you go. Hope whatever you're hiding from won't catch you. <laughs> How you holding up? Guess I'll see you later. You betcha. You're back. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Good news. I have information on your mystery woman. Thank you so much. Is she still alive? Her name these days is Vivian Whitmore. She lives in Las Vegas, and her number is 702-555-9137. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. selling something, hang up right now. I got an air horn in my hand that could deafen a dinosaur, and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, no, no, please. I'm not selling anything. Believe me. Is this Vivian Whitmore? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You got exactly five seconds to state your business. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to ask you some questions. All right. The Moon Lake Park Ranger said you might call, but you have to talk fast. An old friend of mine is flying in today from Florida. And when I say old, I mean old, as in five years older than I am. Don't bother trying to do the math, sweet stuff. You'll hurt yourself. So, that ranger fella said you found an old picture of me. It was of you and Mickey Malone. Do you remember him? Of course I remember him. I remember everything about that time of my life. It was a roaring 20s for crying out loud. One of the most exciting decades in American history. Just because I've got a few years on most people doesn't mean my brain's turned to tapioca, sweet stuff. Did you spend much time at his place on Moon Lake? Moon Lake. 
talk about your fond memories. I had a lot of fun there. Although I wasn't anywhere near as wild as most young people were back then. But I think Mickey kind of respected me for that. I was his gal for five years. He always kept birch beer on tap at that speakeasy of his just for me. Tell me about the speakeasy. It was in the basement, right there at Moon Lake. Feds never knew about it, but everybody who was anybody on the East Coast back then, actors, musicians, bankers, politicians, they knew. You weren't big time unless you'd made at least one trip to Moon Lake Mickey's. Did this speakeasy have a secret entrance? There was a lock hidden in one of the tombstones in that little cemetery behind the house. You needed a key to unlock it, and when you did, stairs would appear that led to the speakeasy. Do you have any idea how to get into Malone's speakeasy from the house? I sure don't. That saloon was built using two main ingredients, concrete and secrecy. Mickey always bragged that nobody could get in unless he wanted them in, and I do believe he was right. But I'll tell you what, if you sent me that picture of me and Mickey, I'll send you my key. How will I know which tombstone to use it in? As a joke, Mickey had a tombstone made with the name of this federal agent who had it out for him inscribed on it. That's the one the key unlocks. It's been fun talking to you. I'll be suing you. Hello again, Miss Drew. Am I in for another interrogation? How much would it cost to send this photo to Vivian Burnett? As always, I'm here to serve, Miss Drew. Just give it to me and I'll take care of it. I'm sure she'll be very pleased to get this back. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. How's the bird watching coming along? I just can't seem to find a red-tailed hawk. Any suggestions? Well, there's got to be lots around here. You haven't been going around wearing sunglasses and earmuffs, have you? No, Red, I haven't. Well, according to my bird map, they like to nest in the big tree that's just to the southwest of the Malone house. I suggest you park yourself nearby and wait. Bound to spot one sooner or later. See you in a while. Just remember, eyes open, mouth shut. Well, I don't see any hawks, but this is probably the tree Red was talking about. At least it was the tree. That sounded like a hawk. Hey, what is that hawk standing on? Oh, that looks like a speaker. Uh. Huh? 
I better get out of here. <gasps> My arms and legs are tied. I can't move. At least I can kick. If I could just get that scythe down, I could use the blade to cut the rope around my wrists and free my hands. I can't just let this thing burn up. I've got to put it out. What in blazes happened? I saw the fire from my platform and came running. You weren't in there playing with matches, were you? I was looking at birds, and then I noticed something on the house, and the next thing I knew I was locked in the tool shed and somebody was setting it on fire. Whoa, you're not making much sense. Probably smoke inhalation or something. Come talk to me after you've cleaned yourself up and gotten some sleep. I need to tell you something. Somebody tried to kill you? I didn't say that. Somebody knocked you out, locked you in a shed, set it on fire, and you think they were, what, just pulling a prank? Wake up and smell the hostile vibes, Nancy. I guess it's just hard for me to believe that anybody would consider me to be that big a threat. I should have never let you stay there by yourself. Sally, I'm fine. I feel bad about your tool shed, though. Who cares about the shed? It was full of junk anyway. I'm glad to be rid of it. That's kind of the way Ranger Akers saw it, too. He showed up right after the bird watcher did and ticketed me for burning refuse in a manner that endangered park property. Ah, uh, that man is insufferable. Emily was nice, though. She came by right afterwards and wouldn't leave until I drank the tea she made for me. Look, Nancy, one more time. If you want to leave, just say the word and I'll come get you. Sally, one more time. I'm fine. Well, then promise me you'll be careful, okay? I promise. I'll be in touch. You better. A package just arrived for you from Las Vegas. Great. Vivian Wouldn't sent me the key. Wouldn't want to break any littering laws, would we? Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. The batteries are going dead. I can't see a thing. I'd better go back. holding up. I need flashlight batteries. Do you carry them? Yep. But you know, I've been meaning to make a pretty display out of them packs of combo coal over there for the longest time. Just can't seem to get around to it. I could probably do that. Here's the way it should look when you're done.
How you holding up? Guess I'll see you later. Keep on trucking. Ta-da! One smiling goldfish. <laughs> it's obvious. Hey, Nancy. This mean you got them cans stacked? You bet. They look just like the picture you gave me, which you can have back. Here's your batteries, and thanks, Nancy. to try to explore this in the dark. Uh-oh. So this is the speakeasy. Wow. Those must be the spigots William Akers mentioned in his journal. It's too dark. <laughs> that doesn't sound good.
Hey there, Nancy. Why, what on earth have we got here? There's plenty of gold here we can share. Nancy, wait! Let's talk about this. This can just be our little secret. You scratch my back, I scratch yours, remember? Nancy! The gold's all yours, Em. Enjoy it while you can. Dear Ned, as soon as I got out of the tunnels, Emily had left a door open. I called the sheriff. But when I led him back down the well to the room where I left Emily, she refused to leave. He and his deputies finally got her out, but one of them said afterward that if he had to choose between getting a bear away from her cub and getting Emily away from that gold, he'd pick the bear. What's worse, by the time they took Emily away, the place was swarming with reporters from all over the country. The commotion has scared away every... On the other hand, when Ranger Acres found out them, Tucker Davis finally cleared away that dead tree, which means I'm free to drive home. Moon Lake is beautiful, but I've had enough wildlife for now. Which reminds me, did I mention that those four ghost dogs are actually very sweet? They're so sweet, in fact, that Sally is seriously thinking about adopting them. How's that for irony? Ever yours, Nancy. Bess, hi, it's Nancy. I'm at this little amusement park on the coast. I wish I could say I was having a wonderful time, but the fact is, some pretty spooky things have been happening here. There have been some strange accidents, and the carousel, it starts up in the dead of night all by itself, like it's haunted or something. You know me, I don't get scared very easily, but I saw it myself, and I'll call you later. I've gotta go, I've gotta go right now.